From bustling cities to tranquil countryside, from exquisite gardens to primitive forests, see China in full bloom. Each year, millions of tourists flock to appreciate China's spring blossoms, fueling local economies. What do the flowers reveal about the country's environmental effort? How do the flowers transform local communities? And what hidden stories do these flowers tell? Let's dive into the magic of Blossom China. Have you ever heard of the train to spring? Well, in Beijing, every March and April, the epicenter of the peach blossom spring fever is at the Jiangua section of the Great Wall. And this train right here is going to take us deep into the heart of that pink paradise. Sounds like a dream ride. Let's give it a go. The view you're going to get here is spring exclusive. Tickets cost you 5 to 18 yuan or 70 cents to two and a half U.S. dollars, depending on where you get on and off. And they do sell out fast. During peak time, this particular line sees about 10,000 passenger trips per day. The train which started operation in 2008 was not a scenic train per se in the beginning, but rather a commute train that connects suburban Beijing and neighboring Hebei province. Then came an interesting twist. In 2015, a photo of the train traversing a breathtaking sea of flowers became an instant internet sensation. Countless tourists started to flock in, and it became one of the best ways to celebrate spring ever since. What a spectacular view. It's drizzling a bit this morning, but it's even better. It's giving you that poetic vibe. It's almost like you're looking at this ancient Chinese landscape painting unfolding right in front of your eyes. You've got the entire mountain covered by greens and super blooms. And you've got the Great Wall in the backdrop. And the best part of it, you get to admire all that from the comfort of a moving train. <laughs> Besides scenic train rides, another option for appreciating the beauty of spring is in local parks. People view cherry blossoms and take pictures with friends and family. Yuyuantan Park is famous for its cherry blossoms. Every spring, thousands of trees burst into color. The park hosts a cherry blossom festival every year, attracting visitors from around the world. This year, more than 80,000 tickets were sold on the opening day. The surging demand for flower viewing has also triggered a boom in related businesses. With the cherry blossom turning into a romantic and cultural icon, the number and types of cultural and creative products continue to grow. I like phone cases like this one because I like the cherry blossom patterns on it and the color has spring vibes. I came here to buy some products because it reminds me my days in university where there were cherry blossoms every year. By combining the key cultural features of our park and cherry blossoms, we launched a series of cultural products that are not only beautiful but also practical, such as doormats and phone cases. Meanwhile, fridge magnets, badges, and sticky notes with our classic cherry blossom designs are still customer favorites. We even developed our own cherry blossom IP figure Xiaoying for the younger generation. Cherry blossoms mean big business in China. Back in 2019, 340 million passenger trips related to admiring cherry blossoms were registered. 
Related tourism revenue exceeded 60 billion yuan, or about 8.3 billion U.S. dollars. Experts estimate the scale of the cherry blossom-related industry will continue to expand. They see a potential of over 100 billion yuan, or about 13.9 billion U.S. dollars, in the next five to ten years. With Beijing advancing its construction of natural landscape, the Chinese capital has registered more than a thousand parks and gardens. For forests, grasslands, flower gardens and leisure parks, their designs emphasize the philosophies of getting close to nature and coexisting in harmony. I usually take a walk at this park twice a day, one in the morning and one after supper. The environment is good. Of course, we're willing to come here more frequently. I also join some activities here at the park, including playing Tai Chi and dancing. Sometimes my neighbors and friends come here together for a stroll. All of us enjoy the park very much. During the May Day holiday, over a hundred areas were opened up for viewing flowers, such as tulips, lilacs, peonies, and pear blossoms. Parks and nature reserves also held cultural activities. The choices included making cultural products, tasting local snacks, and watching traditional performances. Flower viewing tours camping equipment sales, travel outfit purchases, and seasonal food consumption are creating a boom in the spring economy. Tourism platforms have seen a huge surge in searches and bookings. Many platforms are rolling out promotion packages that capitalize on the seasonal splendor. But it's not just the economy that is benefiting. Scientists from the University of Alabama in the U.S. find that taking a 20-minute break in an urban park will make someone happier, even if it's just sitting there. It doesn't even have to be a park. Little green spots nestled between skyscrapers can also work wonders. Aiming to build itself into a garden city, Beijing's forest coverage has reached nearly 45%. There are over a thousand parks citywide, with 400 million visits registered annually. All these spaces offer people a sanctuary to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and reconnect with their inner peace. From bustling cities to tranquil countryside, from exquisite gardens to primitive forests, see China in full bloom. Each year, millions of tourists flock to appreciate China's spring blossoms, fueling local economies. What do the flowers reveal about the country's environmental effort? How do the flowers transform local communities? And what hidden stories do these flowers tell? Let's dive into the magic of Blossom China. Luoyang, one of the oldest cities in China, is full of culture, history, and flowers. It served as the capital for 13 ancient Chinese dynasties, and its name translates to the city on the sunny side of the Luo River. In spring, tourists come here mainly for the peonies. Peonies are very beautiful and give people a feeling of grace and luxury. It's my third time in Luoyang. The flowers are so big and beautiful. Chinese people like how colorful and gorgeous they are. They have a particularly good meaning. The peony symbolizes wealth, prosperity, happiness. And here in Luoyang, in the peony capital of China, it's definitely flower royalty. The peony, or mu dan, 
is referred to here as China's unofficial flower. The Luoyang peony has been cultivated here for over 1,500 years, reaching its peak in the Song Dynasty. Only the peony is worthy of being hailed as the beauty of the empire, a verse from the famous Tang Dynasty poet Liu Yuxi. The peony festival in Luoyang began in 1983 and has been held every year since. In 2008, it became a national intangible cultural heritage. I come from Nanning, Guangxi. The peonies are at their peak during the Luoyang Peony Festival. I accompanied my mother here to see the flowers. Luoyang has 20 peony viewing gardens containing over 1,000 varieties of the king flower. I can't even remember how many peony gardens I've been to. The flowers were so beautiful. It's very pleasing to the eye. The Chinese peony comes in nine colors. In Shanghai, we also appreciate peonies, but the peonies here are larger, with more varieties and colors. We saw black peonies here. They were scarce but very beautiful. The flower is planted in over 5,500 hectares across Luoyang. The historical city is the starting point for a long industrial chain of several peony products, including essential oils, cosmetics, porcelain, and even diamonds. The city's peony industry, which is valued at 1.3 billion yuan, or roughly 180 million U.S. dollars, employs over 30,000 people. At the China National Flower Garden, we meet Wang Yueru. She's been working in the flower industry for 30 years. Our garden covers more than 670,000 square meters. The peonies account for 70 percent, with more than 1,000 varieties and more than 600,000 peonies. We put up a greenhouse of more than 7,000 square meters over the flowers. It can moderate rain and sunlight, lower the temperature, and extend the flowering period. While traveling to a different part of the city, you may end up riding on one of Luoyang's two peony-themed trains for only two yuan, roughly 30 U.S. cents, depending on where you get off. So this ticket gets you into one of these, a peony-themed train launched by local authorities in Luoyang in late March in honor of spring season, as well as the Mudan Festival. We get off at Engtian Gate. Built in 605, it served as the south entrance to Luoyang's palace during the Sui and Tang dynasties. The palace even once hosted China's first and only empress, Wu Zetian. At the Luoyang Museum, queues stretch out with eager tourists ready to discover what the city has to offer. Over 20,000 cultural relics are collected here. During the Peony Festival, the daily number of visitors reached the maximum. We expanded the quota to 15,000 people per day, and they are fully booked out three days in advance. The museum has been holding a peony exhibition to coincide with the festival. This winding stone path and illuminated walkway lead to a mystical world, well over 1,500 years old. The Longmen grottoes are one of the homes of Chinese Buddhism. More than 100,000 images and statues of Buddha and his disciples are curved into the limestone cliff wall along the Yi River. During peak time, we receive about 30,000 people daily. As a guide, I have to host five or six groups of tourists a day from all over the world. At the Longman Grottoes, and in special times of the year, you have a choice. You can either come during the day or you can come in the evening. Now, I've done both, and I'll tell you this. 
there's definitely a reason why they recommend the nighttime tour. The Longman Grottoes are a spectacular sight, especially at night. The scenery under the lights is particularly stunning. I think the grottoes are very mysterious. The miraculous craftsmanship makes me emotional. I admire the work of our ancestors. The highlight of the statues is the Losana Buddha. Standing over 17 meters high and built during the Tang Dynasty, it commemorates the move of the capital from Datong to Luoyang during the Northern Wei Dynasty. In a 2024 report, Sea Trip listed Luoyang on its top 10 list of popular destinations for flower tourism. Authorities say that from April 1st to 15th of this year, around 10 million tourists visited Luoyang, generating over $1 billion in revenue. We have created different scenarios to improve the flower viewing experience, highlighting various Chinese elements and immersive activities. We tap into the flower economy, create new business models and provide better services for domestic and foreign tourists. One of these foreign tourists is New Zealand botanist Michelle Moore. During the pandemic, she founded a bilingual peony club involving fellow Kiwis and Chinese enthusiasts. She's currently traveling to educate herself on the peony and has an ambitious plan. So I really want to promote the name Mudan for all the woody peonies in the world and for the whole world to use that name. And I think it's important because there's a Japanese name, Ito, for another hybrid, which is quite important. But really, China is the home of most of the peonies and thousands of years of breeding. And so I think it would be really great to have a Chinese word used internationally to bring respect to the Chinese um, mudan industry. As part of the local government's efforts to promote local tourism, authorities have allowed children under 12 and adults over 60 to enter tourist hotspots free of charge. Most people come here for an immersive experience. They wear hanfu, the traditional Chinese costumes, and have their photos taken alongside the cultural relics. In 2023, the Luoyang Museum had a record 2.2 million visitors. I believe we will top that this year. I think wearing hanfu is a part of Chinese cultural inheritance. Everyone here wears it like this. Luoyang is fascinating. It's as if every nook and cranny has a story spanning centuries, maybe even millennia. From bustling cities to tranquil countryside, from exquisite gardens to primitive forests, see China in full bloom. Each year, millions of tourists flock to appreciate China's spring blossoms, fueling local economies. What do the flowers reveal about the country's environmental effort? How do the flowers transform local communities? And what hidden stories do these flowers tell? Let's dive into the magic of Blossom China. Vibrant hues of azaleas as far as the eye can see attracting visitors from afar every spring. This is so beautiful. I have never seen such a beautiful fairyland. It gives people wonderful feeling that the Zadias along the way up here were bright and beautiful, giving me a sense of freedom and openness. Looking down from the top of the mountain also makes me happy. This is Baili Dujuan scenic area in PTA, southwest China's Guizhou province a once impoverished region 
that has revitalized its rural areas through focused development of its scenic and cultural assets. The park is considered the most beautiful and colorful belt of azaleas on Earth. It's also the world's largest preserved primitive azalea forest with over 40 azalea species. If the scene from above captivates you, wait till you see the flowers on the ground because there's more than meets the eye on the trail. With the stunning colors of the azaleas, they stretch for more than 100 miles. But there's a backstory to this floral spectacle. It's how 150,000 residents nurtured a laid-back town into a present-day national agricultural tourism success story and a model for China's rural revitalization. Nearly 50,000 people, that's about one-third of the population, rely on the flower viewing economy to increase income in Baili Dujuan district. By developing different scenic spots, residents' income has increased. Many of them depend on tourism for a living. In 2013, the park was accorded the highest rating of 5A in China's classification of tourist destinations. Since then, officials say the Baili Dujuan scenic area has attracted tens of millions of domestic and international tourists. Every blossom season, tens of thousands of tourists visit the park at any given day. But the park's operations go beyond the peak bloom season. People come here to appreciate the azaleas in spring, to cool off during summer and enjoy the hot springs in winter. These three seasons help boost the sustainable development of tourism in Baili Dujuan for the whole year. The marriage of governance with foresight, people participation, preservation of nature, and reasonable use of science and technology, which is evident in the Huijing Flower Science and Technology Park. It's a company dedicated to propagating azalea species that bloom for one month longer. Really attractive is. More than that, the park is also doing business with customers outside Guizhou, or even outside China. Last year, we export sunflower to Vietnam mm -hmm. and also sunflower to Korea oh. from China, from our farm. We send all in this size to Korea and the Vietnam. They also like it very much. The Korean people, they like it in the springtime. They sell it in the springtime. And also the Vietnam people, they are buying like our Chinese New Year. So they use to decorate their house or office. Since its establishment in 2022, the company has hired dozens of local farmers, providing them not just with alternative income, but also advanced skills training to ensure a better harvest of azaleas. So they are learning how to produce that in the perfect way. It's not uh, they pr produce 100 pots and out of that, they are only 50% for the A quality. But after we're training them, th what they are doing now, they can have uh, 95, 98% by the A quality. Because they are learning from here. They know what is the right time to give the fertilizers, to spray, what's the condition they need to spray, and when they need to change the pot, and uh, when they need to do the pinch. 57-year-old Ye Xiangwei is one of the farmers turned gardeners. Before joining Huijing, she planted potatoes and corn, making less than 400 yuan or 55 US dollars per month. But now, her income has seen a nearly tenfold increase. I used to live on planting crops and doing farm work with very little income. Now, at the Flower Science and Technology Park, I can make more than 3,000 yuan per month. I can take care of my family and even raise pigs and cows. The job is easier and cleaner. I can wear clean clothes and shoes, and it is not tiring. I am very happy with my life now. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
as millions of tourists flock to see the wonder of the Baili Dujuan Nature Reserve Park. And as the district enjoys economic prosperity as a result, it is reassuring to know that every effort is made to leave no member of the community behind. The agricultural tourism program is a proven success and it has also benefited other cottage industries in Baili Dujuan district by expanding their markets to more people. Gao Yue is a 28-year-old entrepreneur from Liangjing village. She's just set up her booth at the gate of the scenic area. After graduating from Zhongnan University of Economics and Law in 2018, a prestigious university in Wuhan, she gave up her dreams in the big city and returned to her hometown to take over her family's fermented soybean sauce business. The soybean sauce enhances the flavor of dishes, especially when roasted over open fire. But Gao says the onset of electric and gas ranges have affected the use of their products as a condiment. So she has been making improvements to her family's sauce. There were a few years when our sales were not very good. Then I wonder if there's a way to make our sauce more convenient to use, like combining chili with it. Gao says she has a deep affection for her hometown and the sauces, which have put her through college. Now it's time to give back. Our workers are mainly hired from our village or nearby villages. They get a stable income here, and then their family living conditions also become better. Many of our workers have built new houses in recent years. Gao never sees her return home as a sacrifice. She says she is happy with her life now. Both my life and work are good here. I wake up every morning to a peaceful environment and fresh air, so I made up my mind to stay here. It's no surprise why so many tourists continue to be drawn to this place. It's not only the calming sound of the chirping birds, the cool spring breeze, the early morning fog penetrating deep into the woods, and the dewy azaleas that can turn one pensive. It's also the people who believe that they are all in this together, nature and mankind.